I believe that online shopping has been already integrated in our daily lives, such as Amazon, eBay, the most used platforms, and also you can even buy groceries online. For example, in Europe, you can get your groceries via Gorillas, Fink, or Getia. But how about luxury goods? Do you have any experience purchasing luxury goods online? Well, this episode, I would like to talk a little bit about luxury e-commerce. Hi everyone, welcome to a new episode of Fashion Brief. Luxury e-commerce. The reason why I'd like to talk about this topic is because in the end of this August, the Swiss luxury conglomerate Richemont announced that it's selling 47.5% of its loose-making Yolks Nittaporte with the abbreviation YNAP to the rival Farfetch as part of a complex agreement that contains provisions for a full acquisition within a few years. Well, upon reading this news, it triggers my curiosity about how can this used to be first number one luxury e-commerce platform ended up being sold to another fashion luxury e-commerce. So I'd like to talk a little bit about the history behind um, Yolks Ne Saporte and Regiment so that you can have a better understanding how they become together, merge together, and now it ended up selling up to Farfetch. So already back in 2010, Richemont bought already the majority shares of Netaporte, and in 2015, Netaporte merged with Yorks into a huge group called Yorks Netaporte. And while Netaporte is selling mainly luxury goods, Yorks is actually a fashion slash luxury e-commerce. And in 2018, Richemont bought the 95% of Yorks Netaporte's shares, so it becomes truly the owner of this e-commerce group. I already read this news back in 2010 and actually I think the move of Richemont buying Nesaporte is a really smart move. It's because although at that time e-commerce, let alone luxury e-commerce, it's still at a phase of rising. And so it's definitely a really nice investment for the group that specialized in jewelry, watches, those hard luxury goods to have also this software. And this basically is a rising star of Richemont. And now Richemont is trying to sell Yolks Nittaporte to Farfetch. The biggest reason is because it's striking down Richemont's valuation, let alone Cartier or Van Cleef and Arpel is having a huge revenue contribution to the group. So it becomes a problem child for Le Richemont. And so what is the true reason why Jux Nittaporte is dragging down Richemont's valuation? Well, the biggest reason is because it's having severe financial problems. Namely, they are trying to create a single platform, creating a omni stock for all the platform under the group. The group includes different platforms, including Yolks, Netaporte, Mr. Porter, and Outnet. Yolks is originally a Italian fashion luxury e-commerce, and Netaporte is the pioneer of um, luxury e-commerce. And for Mr. Porter, it's specialized in men swear, in men um, product. And the Outnet, it's actually the outlet of luxury goods. So the rationale behind this single platform is to provide logistics, including inventory, shipment, and also the stock management system for all these four platforms to use. The initiation is really good, but afterwards it's planned badly. And also due to the untrust by senior executives, they think that this is a scale that is hard to accomplish. And it also lies in cultural difference because Yolks is an Italian company and Netaporte is a UK company. This makes the communication even harder. Moreover, they try to launch the new platform without getting it ready. For example, they integrate the platform for the outnet. Instead of making the backend logistics ready, they launch a platform. 
and which confuse and also deteriorate the customer experience. Some of the functions which are available before becomes unavailable with the new platform. And so speaking of e-commerce, the platform itself is really important because customer have no real life experience in the store, for example. The functionality, the usability affects the customer experience. And so throughout this journey, the alternate failed completely and which created a slump of sales. And not only this single platform um, technology transformation dragged down the whole Yorks and Zapote group, but also its e-commerce business model. Because Netaporte, as a pioneer of the luxury e-commerce platform, it started its way in a more traditional and conventional way. Namely, they built up a wholesale business model that echoed traditional department stores buying and pushing up merchandise to customers. For brands, this offered a simple solution to online. And so after showing this luxury e-commerce case, let's talk about what are the pros and cons of e-commerce. Why do people want to shop their luxury goods online instead of going to the store? Certainly, there are plenty of cons of luxury e-commerce. For example, there is no human contact, no consultancy, and also, to some degree, it reduces the exclusivity of luxury brands because online luxury platforms is available to all customers. But of course, there should be something special for the luxury e-commerce that makes customers want to go to. For example, My Teresa is really famous for its good customer retention. They acquire a lot of royal customers for their platform. For example, by providing limited editions, special collaboration with different brands, by making capsule edition, and also to have special editorials to aspire, to make the customers know that there should be different combination possibilities with different products and different brands. And this is also what customers put emphasis on luxury e-commerce because they can just go to the official website and then to shop the exact product. But for those who want to go to the luxury e-commerce, they want inspirations. And so for this, my Teresa did a really good job. But however, this means that there will be a lot of cost for the platform. According to Business of Fashion report, My Teresa costs three times more for acquisition new customers than Farfetch, which means that My Teresa, after the IPO years ago, they need to know how they should focus on valuable customers instead of spending a lot of money throughout their customer base. And so having unique content and editorials is one of the key to success for luxury e-commerce and also business model. It plays an important role upon hearing the case of Yorks Netaporte and Regemont. And one of the good examples is actually Farfetch. Its e-concession business model drives the revenue up since the pandemic. Farfetch is a platform player aggregating the inventory of its boutique partners without holding any inventory itself. And instead, Farfetch's algorithm directs orders to boutiques that hold the inventory and are linked to the local fulfillment network. So an order placed by a customer is directed to a boutique based on proximity, cost of delivery, and the boutique's fulfillment record. Well, for customers, there are minimum difference between the e-concession and also wholesale business model such as um, Netaporte and Farfetch. But for e-commerce platforms, they can save a lot of cost. And moreover, by partnering with boutiques, Farfetch has over 400 boutiques until now, which provide a wide range of brand selection. Well, at the same time, it benefits from the buying expertise of its boutique partners in effectively curating a relevant range. And with no inventory to manage, as I've mentioned before, the cost reduction factor, the cost of bringing new boutiques on board is minimal. And while restricted 
essentially to image processing and data mapping. And so all in all, for luxury e-commerce, it's really important for them to stay unique, namely having their USP for customers to know that by shopping in this platform, they can get more inspiration or maybe they can develop their own unique editorial way to showcase the customer that we are having this speciality of curating this kind of style. And of course, also, as I've mentioned before, the business model, e-commerce platforms should always stay flexible and also to stay current, to adopt technology and make the cost reduced in order to have a higher margin. Since the luxury e-commerce platform is really competitive, there are plenty of platforms, not only luxury, but also fashion platforms, such as ASOS, Zalando, Yokes, they are also selling the entry-level luxury goods. And so without having impeccable system, it's really hard to win over competitors. And so that's it for the episode of Luxury E-Commerce. Now I'm really curious about your experience of shopping luxury goods online. Please leave a comment below and share with me your experience about how you feel the whole journey of shopping on e-commerce. And so in November 2022, this year will be my second anniversary of Fashion Brief. I'd like to show my greatest appreciation for my all subscribers and supporters. Without you, I can't make it today. All I can promise is that I will keep uploading new videos and share with you about my ideas in the fashion industry. See you soon.